Hello, this is Kathy from The Daily Marker. How are you today? I just want to show you, um, I finished my card, I watercolored it, and then I want to show you how I filled in the nooks and crannies and made my card, made the coloring stand out. So let's see how long this ends up being. Now here's um, the finished card, finished watercoloring, and I'm taking some colored pencils and they were very sharp. Now I'm using some Fabricano watercolored paper. So it's very important that the pencil's really sharp because you have all that texture and you need to fill in those little tiny um, craters on the paper. Craters, whatever you wanna call them. So I'm I don't have a dark red colored pencil. Um, I believe I wanted to use these. They're a little bit harder, a little less wax, um, but it honestly doesn't matter what colored pencils. So anyways, because I couldn't, I used up the really dark deep red and I decided this is a wintry card, so why not use a dark brown? So I have a dark brown colored pencils and I'm just going along some of these petals. I'm just picking some random ones. They're the ones the next door to the to that petal is it's a little bit tucked under that. So I chose that to outline and add some brown highlights. Now I've put this uh sped this up a little bit uh cuz it was I guess once it's sped up, it's 20 minutes. So, so you see me, I'm picking up, um, this is a 0 0.03 marker, and I'm outlining some of the areas that I'm, and this is a Sharpie marker, some of the areas that I'm darkening, I wanna get more punch with like a 0 0.03 or a Sharpie marker. No, a 0 0.03 marker is super fine so sometimes I use the Sharpie marker because it's it's not super fine. I want a little bit more impact. Um, even though the Sharpie's called extra fine, it is extra fine in Sharpie language. So I'm just moving around my image. I'm kind of gonna just focus on the left side of this card panel and then I'll come back and show you a few other things. Now these awesome images are from Honeybee Stamps and I've combined like a Christmas floral with these adorable sweet um, snowmen. And you know, there's so much dear dreariness this time of year and why not put a flower with the snowman? I just think it makes it more fun. So I'm finishing some of these flowers and um, I also have a brown 0 0.03. So when I don't want too much black, I use the brown but it doesn't matter, just add to the nooks and crannies. That's what I'm doing right now. On these leaves, I'm taking that brown pencil and now I'm using the brown 0 0.03 and just bringing that line further into the leaf just to define it and give it a little bit more interest and definition. I'm taking that brown 0 0.03 and just outlining some of the things on the hat as it turns out later, I end up using black, but I'm just, you know, just putzing around, enjoying this process. This is what I love doing with card making. It makes such a difference. And don't worry about where does this go or anything like that. Just add it to some areas, a little darker color, and you'll see how it just makes it pop. When I do my road trips, and it's so rewarding to see people do this and just adding one dark line to something, it's like the light bulb comes on. So don't be afraid. Now, um, so I wanna ground the snowman. I'm not gonna ground the flowers or anything. This is kind of a fanciful card. So I'm just doing some shadow by the snowman Oh, actually, it's a snow woman, excuse me. And I'm just using, I love how you can pick up the texture of the paper with the colored pencils. Um, so I'm just bringing some 
I have dark brown, I'll add some black, and then even some blue. And always, when I'm up close to a line of the image, the flower, this is the black, super fine point, I'm constantly sharpening my pencils. Um, so I'm adding some black. So when you're close up to the edge of the petals or the snowman, you can press a little bit harder, but you want to draw that line out. You want it to blend into the card. So then you have to like feather it like you're touching a baby's eyelashes. So you got to be so soft so you don't poke their eye. So just feather that color out ever so lightly and then you just get like a nice fade so um always i always 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 do that you can always go back and add more color but if you add too much if you press too much then you're burnishing it and you're getting all that wax in the pencil and you can't add any color so just practice you know have that relaxed hand just Put on some music and just try and relax your whole body and your face and your mind and just play so when you have that relaxed hand you get you have better results so on the left side of the snowman i decided to add some navy pencil highlights here it'll make the snowman stand out a little bit I always do the left side of everything. I don't worry, as you guys know, where the light's coming from. It doesn't matter to me. It just, if you have a light area and a dark area, it's going to look better. So on the left side of this, I'm just adding some navy. Now notice I'm hovering on that line. Always resharpen that pencil. So I'm really taking time to add color right by the line and right on the line. And then I'm going to draw the pencil out with those feather strokes just to add a little bit. You can almost, it might be easier to think of it like little swirls of wind or little swirls when you're drawing it out. So you're just skimming the surface of the paper at this point just to add, just to get it to blend in. You can use a racer if you're heavy handed or you can just not even worry about it. In the end, you're not going to notice. You're just going to notice how the snowman stands out. So I'm going to go and focus kind of on the left side of the petal, maybe in a little crevice here, uh, and then I'll go down underneath the snowman too. So what is the most important thing about a pencil as a sharp tip, right? So while I finish this, you can see I'm making, this is the, front but I just want to darken the watercoloring a little bit around the snowman so I'm just doing the, those little feather circles on the right side of the snowman but I want the left side to be darker and then some of the little nooks and crannies around these flowers here so I just have to say for one second how awesome honeybee stamps is um yesterday I was um, just having some fun using some die cuts to make some personalized kind of notebook markers for family. And I, do, I went and looked at my calendar. I'm like, I never have like just free time like this. What's going on? This can't be right. And I looked at my calendar. There was nothing there. And then I get an email from Lisa. Oh, hey, um, do you have your project? And I'm like, oh, my God, I just like shit bricks okay sorry um so they're like don't worry don't worry and they were just so nice and so lovely only one other time i've forgotten a post and that was there was a family tragedy and i just had a perfect excuse then this time i the second time in my blogging career no excuse i knew something was up but i couldn't whatever so anyway i just thought i'd say that right now it's so great when there's not that pressure or you're allowed to make mistakes misopposed bring it out later whatever so i worked you know until like two in the morning and then i woke up 
my card was completely dry and then I spent like an hour um, doing this, which is my favorite part. So now you saw me, I had a very light pink pencil with a very sharp tip and I just wanted to add, enhance those little cheeks. I'm using the 0.03 to add some little eyelashes. Um, and then I'm just going around on the darker side with this just to refine those lines. Um, this is some no line coloring, so I feel like you need some line somewhere, but ever so softly. Um, so I'm just futzing around my image doing that. Now I'm going to add a little black here. Then I'll be adding, normally I would add, well on these gorgeous flowers there's a lot of stamen and I would be doing that but I really want, since it's no line color and you really don't see where that is, there's a very light shadow. I decided just not to, to bring those out with a sharpie or a dark marker um, because I want the snowman to stand out. So you saw me pick up my white gel pen and I'm just adding some dots to the flowers on the hat. Then there's these gorgeous sprigs. And when I was doing the no line coloring, I lost track of where the um, little berries were. So I just added circles with my watercolor and now I'm using the gel pen. And I always warm it up on my finger. It draws the oils out of the gel pen and it really truly does make it work better. I confirmation of that. Um, so I'm just working on these little sprigs with that, adding those white accents, and then I'll just keep on going. So have you started adding little details to the nooks and crannies? I hope you notice the difference and I hope you don't worry about it. So I used Windsor Newton um, watercolors on this card. Um, now I have a light blue colored pencil, sharp again, and I'm just, you can see where the blue is that I used earlier on the flower. So I'm just using this like powder blue just to soften that and blend it into the background a little more. And then I realized, well, I could use a little brown line here and a little black line here. So I stopped what I was doing and I'm doing that. I could do this for hours. Um, so this is the 0 0.03. Everyone needs a 0 0.03. And then I wanted it darker where it's dark green. So I picked up the Sharpie because it's a thicker line. Um, so the powder blue pencil I'm just using to blend and add just a little highlights in these areas that I didn't do any darkening. And I'm just using little feather circles ever so lightly staying kind of close to the image. And again, I can't say it enough that I'm always resharpening that tips even when you don't see it. And you'll notice, oh man, it makes such a huge difference on watercolor paper. And unlike Nina, it does too, but, but it's not as pronounced because there's not as much texture. However, the pencil does pick up a little bit of texture. So once I'm finished, I'm gonna, um, I decided I need a little bit more in the centers of the flowers, so I'm using a rust. A deep red would be perfect, or maybe an orange, but I decided to use this rust. So I'm just going around, adding a little bit to the centers. I'm not worrying about anything else. So I'm going to use the marker to color some twine. Um, I have natural twine, it's not colored, and then I just use a marker to color it. And I'm going to put that um, under at his neck. Since this is a one layer card, I feel like something needs to have dimension. So the twine is like the perfect thing to add when I'm doing a one layer card like this. When you're masking and doing one layer, I just need that pop. And I don't pre-plan my card, so I'm always like, oh great, okay, where's the sentiment going to go? And then I've spent so much time, I'm like, well, it's, I always need blank cards, so I figure 
I'm just going to color my twine, get that dimension, and be finished. So, and it always, I just love having blank cards. Of course, there's so many great honeybee sentiments. Um, now, I have that same color I used in the centers of flowers, and I'm just darkening the top of that carrot. And here's the final card. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching, and happy holidays to you.